Hi there, this is Andrew Tsai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at this MacBook Air early 2015 11 inch and I'm going to be installing this TIE fast solid state drive into this computer. So the MacBook Air has several options for upgrading the storage inside it. So there are several companies that make solid state drives like these. Um, another method that I've been using in the past is to attach a an adapter to a standard NVMe solid state drive and then inserting it into the MacBook Air and MacBook Pros of this era. But uh, this particular company seems to be a, a cheaper solid state drive which doesn't have many reviews online. So I thought that I would have a look at using this particular drive which is a 512 gigabyte drive. I'm gonna be installing it into this computer and seeing how it performs. And I'll also be doing a general tutorial on just how to open the bottom case, how to insert the solid state drive and how to get this run up and running. So the first thing that we need to do is to flip over the MacBook Air. So I'm just gonna put this down here. So the type of screwdriver we need to use is a Pentelo 1.2. And I'm just gonna be taking off the screws from the bottom case here. So what's important is that the two center screws are longer, so just be aware of that when you put it back together. So now we can open up the bottom case, which we just do by lifting up from here. So the first thing that we should do is to unplug the power cable. So that can disconnect the battery from the logic board. So all I need to do is uh, lift that up and now the power is completely disconnected from the logic board. So here we have the actual solid state drive itself. This is where all the data is kept. This particular one is a quite small 120 gigabyte drive. So we need to upgrade this to something much more substantial. So that's why we've got the 512 gigabyte solid state drive. And to take this out, all we need to do is to use a T5 screwdriver. And I'm just going to take this screw out. So once that screw has been removed, we can actually take a hold of this solid state drive, kind of lift it up and then put it to the side. So now I'm going to be opening up this tie fast solid state drive. So quite nicely, they have included all the screwdrivers that we need, which is uh, quite nice. Um, but uh, I've got my own set, so I won't be needing these today. And uh, this is the solid state drive itself. So as you can see, it's got the correct pin configuration for the Mac computer. And um, this is quite rare because that means that this solid state drive is designed specifically for this type of Mac. So this looks like the 12 and 16 pin drive. So I'm just gonna remove it from the packaging. And then what we can do now is to insert it into this section here. So I'm just going to flip it over. Let's just have a quick look at this. It's quite interesting, the kind of comparison of the designs and how this drive is much, much larger than this drive. It's also interesting how the chips are configured. Be quite surprised that 512 gigabytes fits in only a single chip is what it looks like but anyway we can also see here that the size and the type is also indicated on the sticker so let's see how this performs so all we need to do is align up the pins which is uh, longer on this side than shorter on that side and then I'm just going to insert into there Okay, and then we're gonna put back the screw which is holding the solid state drive in. And now we're just going to put the power cable back in. Then we're gonna put the bottom case back on. So to screw this in, I'm just going to use my pentelope screwdriver 
and put the screws all back into the right place. So when you boot up the new solid state drive for the very first time, you'll see that we have data already on the solid state drive. It has actually been pre-formatted and installed with Big Sur. I can see that this is the normal Big Sur startup window. And this is as if you've uh, done a, a Big Sur installation. Now, I'm fairly certain that this company, Tyfast, do not have some kind of special license to distribute Apple's operating systems. So this is a very bizarre state of affairs. I don't think any other company that I've seen actually distribute a pre-installed copy of Big Sur. I mean, Apple don't even do anything like that. So um, this is definitely some kind of copyright breaching product, but it's quite interesting because it's uh, quite a large time saver. We also have some security issues too, because we don't really know where this operating system came from and whether it's been tampered with. So what we'll do here is just going to erase this and then do a, a clone from the backup that I'm going to have. One thing I'm going to do before I actually do that is test the speeds. So now I'm going to run the Blackmagic disk speed test and this is going to give us some more information about how fast this solid state drive runs. So as we can see from the actual Blackmagic speed test we're getting a write speed of 1037 megabytes per second. Basically this looks like a very fast solid state drive. If we look at the disk utility we can see that the Thai fast NVMe drive is um, formatted as a GUID partition and we can see that this untitled volume is an APFS um, formatted drive and uh, this has been given this weird name so this is, must have been done in a big batch and then we have the data volume there so pretty typical stuff for a solid state drive um, it's quite interesting seeing that how they've actually gone about doing this it's um, pre-installed but it seems to be working relatively fast okay so what I've done now is to actually reinstall High Sierra by cloning the original data onto this hard drive and then cloning it back using carbon copy cloner. So I can definitely see that High Sierra is working using this solid state drive. I have the details of this TIEFAST NVMe drive here and it seems to be working fine even on an older operating system like High Sierra. Eventually I'll probably move this on to Big Sur but for now I've got the original data from the old drive onto the new drive and it seems to be working fine. So I can definitely say that this TIEFAST NVMe 512 gigabyte seems to work perfectly well. Time will tell whether it's a long-term storage solution. Is it better than using an adapter and a NVMe drive? Still not sure at this stage. It's a little bit tricky to know because this solid state drive seems to be fine, but there are several alarm bells that are ringing in my head because it has the pre-installed Big Sur, which I removed, and um, it doesn't seem to be easily purchasable online. I actually bought this from Amazon, but it's actually not for sale on Amazon in the UK or in the US. You can still buy these from eBay and AliExpress, but um, a little bit hard to get hold of, but probably the cheapest way to get half a terabyte of storage or a terabyte of storage on these older MacBooks. One of the reasons I chose this method is because I started seeing the Syntec adapter style um, NVMe drive start to fail after a few years. I wait to see how these work out after a long period of time. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tech video.